Good day, I'm Greg Krasowski, an American attorney with law office in Washington, D.C. This video is a, for the launch of my law office's new initiative on representing uh, victims, families, and survivors of missing indigenous and also murdered indigenous women. Uh, I'm an immigrant who, today's December 19th, and that's the day uh, my mother and I came to the United States a long time ago. And one thing I've always wanted to do is express my gratitude to Native Americans, to indigenous people, tribes and nations, uh, for the opportunity that the United States afforded me. Because I realize more than ever that uh, the opportunities that I had in the U.S. and the quality of life uh, were in part at the expense of Native Americans, indigenous people whose lands were taken away, people who were lied to, people with whom various governments made agreements, contracts, broke them, uh, people who succumbed to illnesses that were brought from the old world, but more importantly, people who were driven from their lands, uh, often at point of gun, often exterminated, became victims of genocide, were rounded and herded and onto reservations in states that were far away. Given that history of injustice, one of the injustices that remains today is, from what I see, based on my study of missing and murdered indigenous women, and based on the calls I've received from the indigenous community, is that these cases are not receiving enough attention from local law enforcement, from local prosecutors, and this goes as well for federal law enforcement and federal prosecutors. I don't like to do criminal defense work because I've always been a victim-oriented. I would rather represent victims of crime. Obviously, if you're unjustly accused, if, you, if you're being unjustly prosecuted, then I'll be glad to represent you. But my priority and my commitment and loyalty is to the victims of crimes. So what I want to do is put my experience to work, not just as a lawyer, uh, but also as a former police officer, uh, also as a former first responder who's worked in EMS, fire rescue, who's volunteered for organizations like the American Red Cross, who's done a lot of work in Rotary Clubs and other organizations, uh, fraternal organizations, to help the families, to help, well, actually the missing women themselves and the murdered women. Uh, so justice can be served. Uh, I'm going to say some things that are obvious to some people, but may not be obvious to everyone. Uh, often, at least based on my experience as a police officer and as a lawyer, uh, law enforcement is slow to react for a number of reasons. Why? Because often just because someone has gone missing doesn't mean that they're at risk. They may just simply have left and didn't let anyone know and were will come back or maybe want to relocate and things like that. But I think a lot of cases, no matter what the background of the missing person, of the missing woman, uh, require immediate attention because even if someone leaves their place of residence, their local community, uh, voluntarily, often they become a risk of being held against their will uh, prostituted, this is human trafficking now, beaten, tortured, and murdered, and raped. Also, they can quickly uh, succumb to drug abuse, severe substance abuse. Depends where they end up, with whom they end up. And this increases all the risk that I've discussed exponentially of being beaten, exploited, trafficked, and even killed, held against your will, things like that. 
So the quicker law enforcement responds, the better. Uh, what we do know from experience is, unfortunately, and I'm not approving this, I'm just simply being the messenger, often local law enforcement agencies will respond faster if your family is politically connected, wealthy, you know, prominent member of the community, then you get attention uh, because your family is influential. But heaven forbid if you come from a disadvantaged family, poor family, single parent household, family with a history of substance abuse, history of criminal records, whether the missing person or their parents or their relatives or people who reside with them, or even extended family. This already creates a negative impression uh, with law enforcement and they're in no rush to drop everything and to work on your case. My approach is this. Uh, first of all, everyone's got equal rights, regardless of how much money you make or your parents or your, you know, your family makes, how prominent they are, politically connected, uh, you know, doesn't really matter. And a child doesn't get to pick to the parents to whom he or she is born. So what we have to do as law enforcement, as attorneys who are officers of the court, that's what we refer ourselves as, right? Is to make sure that we can intervene as quickly as possible to try to bring that person back home. Uh, because the longer they're out there without anyone looking for them, the higher the risk that that person is going to be hurt or murdered. Uh, also, even if the person has already been murdered, uh, you know, within the first 24 hours, same thing. The quicker we start the investigation, the higher are the chances that, you know, you can try to apprehend the murderer before the trail goes cold. Uh, these are important principles that most law enforcement investigators understand. And I hope prosecutors understand those as well. So this video isn't just for victims, families, uh, and loved ones, and co-workers, and friends. This video is also for fellow lawyers, uh, fellow law enforcement officers, both active and retired. Uh, join me in this effort. Let's try to coordinate uh, to help with this epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous women. Uh, we can put our efforts together. Uh, we can improve the clearinghouse process of information exchange. Uh, we can also try to provide assistance to local law enforcement, to local prosecutors, uh, if assistance can be provided. This is also a challenge to those of you who are in the private security or in the detective business, if you're private detectives, private investigators, same thing. Try to devote some pro bono time to this project because this is a community that needs our help. This is a victim class that needs our help. Regarding prevention, same thing. Uh, you know how they say, right, an ounce of prevention worth a pound of cure. If you have a missing woman already in one community or in one household, chances are that those same risk factors are at work that can put other women in that community or in that household or the family, extended family at risk. So let's try to get assistance. Whether if this, we're talking about a school-aged child through the local schools, through local child protective services, through local churches or other nonprofits, whether it's rotary clubs, other clubs, uh, that's important uh, because often uh, those children need help. And I've seen that uh, working as a police officer in Philadelphia's poor neighborhoods. Uh, they're not getting help from their family. Their parents may have substance abuse problems. Their parents may be suffering from poverty, from lack of education. Uh, their parents may have criminal records or be incarcerated, at least one of them. Uh, probation, parole, things like that. Things that complicate uh, the ability of the parent to properly parent and to put food on the table. 
um, you know, and to create a comfortable, appropriate environment for a child. Uh, and also give the child proper attention to make sure that the child doesn't start performing poorly in school, start having disciplinary problems, problems with truancy, problems in or outside of school with alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and who can now potentially become a target from human traffickers. Often, uh, from what I've seen, uh, people who are missing will go or can be taken across state lines. Obviously, with missing and murdered indigenous women, you also have the question of jurisdictions. You know, you'll have local indigenous tribal police whose jurisdiction ends at the border of their tribal area, their reservation. And then the baton of looking for the person has to be passed on to local or state law enforcement within the state where the tribal community is, uh, or even neighboring states. Uh, and often these are not high priority cases. So we, we have to make sure that we can help uh, coordinate, get on the phone, by email, by fax, get the information out, remind people that these are priority cases like any other missing persons case, uh, to help bring these women back, to get justice for anyone who's involved in any wrongful conduct toward them. And if these women have been kidnapped, held against their will, falsely imprisoned, or become victims of other crimes, including sex crimes, or heaven forbid, like I said, manslaughter, homicide, then those people need to be brought to justice. Uh, and, and, and that's another chapter in the story. So I think it'll be extremely beneficial for us to create a working group of attorneys, uh, especially in states that have significant uh, indigenous Native American communities, uh, working groups also including not just lawyers, but active and former prosecutors, law enforcement officers, like I've said, private security, private investigators, uh, and other people who can be of assistance. Uh, this is also called uh, people who are in uh, the counseling field, whether you're psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, clinical social workers. Uh, let's get involved. Uh, because like I've said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Plus, the victim's families need counseling and assistance as well. Uh, hopefully this initiative will be picked up uh, by other people as quickly as possible and we can put a dent in this problem and uh, put an end to this epidemic. Again, my heart goes out to uh, the families, the loved ones of missing and murdered indigenous women. And uh, as a father, uh, as an American, uh, just as a man, uh, I'm going to try to do everything that I can. Uh, to help you out and to prevent this from happening in the future to other women to the best of my ability and the time that I can uh, devote to this. Thank you and uh, like I said, uh, let's get this initiative moving. If you know someone uh, who has a missing person or someone whose loved one was murdered please feel free to reach out to my law offices and we'll look at the case, we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Look forward to helping everyone.